<laughs> this feels like the meaning of life. When we get to the end, we don't know what to do, so we just play another spin. That is true. Gabby Girl, 86 from the UK. Hello, hello, how are you, girl? Some connectivity at the bottom, so we're going to start with a bet. Turn like 1.5. Wouldn't be too many raises you'd expect. Now, flush is good. Eww. We do now want to play for stacks. So we'll go for uh, four big blinds. Okay. Maybe we could check back, honestly, like do something kind of weird, but I don't know enough. We know Gabby had a bluff on them and they took queen five, which possibly might have been an over bluff, I'm not sure. Two backdoor straight draws and the back to flush draw. Will one of them hit? Mine will hit indeed. Delays 80%. Valley range would be ace x and king x. They do limp some of them, they might check the flop as well. Don't see any need to raise or call. Uh, sorry, just call. And a 10 comes. We have a straight. That's nice. We're not raising a bet, though. They check. We want a better sizing where we think an ace will call. So I think like 3.7. It's going to be my sizing choice. We're just essentially targeting air. I think a lot of air does bet this flop. Um, and then on this, I don't think it's, it's really difficult for us to have that much many bluffs now. So I was planning to give up, but actually, I think I will just jam at this point. Uh, and just pray that we don't get snapped off by an eight. And it's really tough. We have six, seven, six, five. Maybe there's a bit too many bluffs. Gabby seems to be pretty solid so far. We haven't seen him do anything dumb or recreational or whatever. Uh, I'm going to check back this king five. Very, very static board. We're pretty happy with it. Obviously, nice to make a house. Gabby should check again. Uh, I think they're probably a mixture of just mostly just air at this point. So I'm actually going to double check this, um, which looks pretty exploitable. It is pretty exploitable. Um, if they triple check, Okay, I'm we'll trying to get some value. They now choose to bet one. I'm now going to go for a pop bet. Okay, nice. Maybe nice. Oh, they had a three, wow. Yarrow, hello Yarrow. How big is the difference between fives and ten stakes at regular spins? There is a difference for sure. I would say at tens you will definitely find people who play full time a lot more than you will at fives. What chivvy would you recommend for it to be worth to move up? Uh, I would say try not to view it as a, a static, I need this chivvy over this many games and then I move up. Rather, once you've got a, a, a winning sample at the fives, of course you want to have that to start with. And then once you've got the confidence of that winning sample for a, for a, a decent volume, start adding tens in slowly. You don't have to suddenly move up to tens and that's what you play from now on. You add up, add the a few tens at the weekend, maybe on a Sunday, maybe on a Saturday, whenever you're feeling good. Um, and you and you don't and then you keep playing fives. You don't just stop playing fives as well and keep building that fives game as well and see. Experiment with different things, think about different things, and just build it slowly. And then as you go from, say, having 10% of your volume being the tens, maybe the next week it's 20%, the week after it's 30%. And very quickly you find that now you're kind of playing 75%, 90% of your volume, and then you play 100% of your volume. And then you sort of slowly, rather than just like big crash and hope that you do well, it's a much more smooth landing where you've got a lot more, it's a lot more relaxed and you've got a lot more time. And Because you know you're winning at the fives, right? And so well, I hope you do. Um, and hopefully you are. And so once you've got that, why jeopardize that? Why just keep building slowly and give yourself plenty of time um, rather than like move up and, you know, panic because I panicked the first time your first 100 games don't go so well. You go, ah, and, you know, you don't need to worry about that too much. Have 65 chip EV plus if you're playing ultras, flash games have 20 chip EV plus. It, but it depends on so many different factors, right? So it's really hard to say exactly. We'll end the queen four. We haven't really had anything going for us this, so far this heads up. We don't do that here. That's okay. Check this one. They showed a little bit of a... Uh... So again, I don't know too much about Gabigola, other than they were very stubborn. So it gives me extra incentive slightly to check in that spot, I think. But we definitely could obviously range better. We'll call this Jack. Good luck us against King 3. That's a good turn again. Always nice to have a little 100% by the turn. We're calling Queen 10 suits. Good luck us. Okay. 52%, 34%, 0%. Ace enough is not a jam. Nah, we'll jam it. Good luck. 61%, 0.6%, 0%. You do have to win the all ins, guys. But GG, that was a solid game. Mr. Jig says, What would you say is the toughest lineup and place to play in your career? Supernova Elite or Diamond Club era, I'm guessing. Poker is a game where like you compare yourself to the field. And I think there were moments, I was lucky enough historically to have certain moments where I felt like I was quite far ahead of the field. And moments where actually, you know, if you take, for example, when the 500s first came out, 
and I played a lot of those games and I probably wasn't didn't have that big an edge. I don't know if it was the best decision at that point. When the, when it was like hundreds, I was like absolutely loving life, you know what I mean? GG, everybody. Well, that was the final stream where we hit the bankroll challenge and we did it, so brilliant. Feel free to follow any of our social media stuff, of course.